Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give On the me line a from Minnesota, Shotgun Crips. I have no good. What up, no good? What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good, homeboy. Thanks for joining the program, man. I appreciate yeah. you sharing your story tonight. For sure, for sure. I definitely had to get on here and, and you know, and just spread a little love to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, man. And that's what my show is all about. You know, it's not about glorifying. It's about, you know, teaching and, and just like you said, showing love um, yeah. and, and sharing sharing your story, man, and seeing if this is a life that, you know what I'm saying, these younger kids want to want to jump into. Um, so uh, this, is, this, is what I, this is what I tell the young guys, like, this ain't like it used to be, man. And, and I'm gonna tell them what my older homie told me, man. Everything that glitter and gold. This, you know, this lifestyle is not. It's really not the lifestyle to, to want to be in, man. Mm. You know, I try to tell the young guys the if you're gonna do it, go full fledged. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta understand that there's a small print at the bottom of that when you join this shit that you might not be. You not. You might not see. You know, it's a small print, and, and, and it's, it's it's very dangerous. You could you could die. You could go to jail. You could all kind of shit can happen with this. And if that's the lifestyle that a person want to live, and they like that, then I say go for it, full fledged. But if you know you're not willing to to, to go hard and go full fledged for it, I wouldn't do it. I'm mad. I even got in the gang. I wish I would have been hooping somewhere or something. You know what? I mean? Man, so, well, going to school somewhere. Well, let's uh, let, let's talk about that a little bit, man. We'll go, you know, um, way back. Let's take it way back. Uh, where did yeah. you, where did you grow up? I grew up in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, South Side. Okay, you know, South Side, Minneapolis. And, and, and I see my dad. It, see, it all came from my dad. I see my dad cripping. You know what I'm saying? I, like I, I didn't know nothing about it at first. I just happened to come outside and and I'm seeing I'm seeing the low riders. I'm seeing the, the guys out there, and, and you know. I never had a, I never had like my I never I never had like a, a role model. So when I came out there and seen that, they was my role models that I seen every day. Like you know, so that's what draw drew me to the gang. The gang lifestyle was them. Okay, it was my dad, his friends, and stuff like that. That was that's what drew me to that. You know. Okay. And uh, what was Minnesota like back then, Minneapolis specifically, when you were coming up? It was. It was. It was cool, but it was hard. You know, people was getting killed. See, a lot of people asleep on Minnesota because they think that we're, we're up north and this, that, and the other. But it's very dangerous. Like, if people go look at the news right now, like, it's very dangerous. And back then it was dangerous, but now, I mean, back then it was real dangerous. Then it stopped for a minute, then it got way more dangerous again, you know. And, like, right now with this police thing, this police hear, uh, hearing that's going to come up, Another riot might pop off at any time. And this is what I didn't understand. I didn't understand, like, the Somalian who called the police on dude, you know, they all blood in front of that store. That's a, that, that whole area is a blood neighborhood. That's the 30s. And that store is their main store. Mm. So I understand for dude to call the police on that man to say something about a fake $20 bill, but no $20 bill came up. But then when everybody riot, they never tore that store up. You know, they came out and tore everything else, but didn't tear the store up. That uh, it just it just blew my mind. You know, but growing up back in the day was it was kind of it, it, it was hard. You know, it was hard, but we had to get through it. Mm-hmm. You know, and now a lot of us that that went through it and, and and made it through them hard times and banged against each other. We see each other now, and some of us got jobs. Some is doing the family thing and all that. You know, you know we respect each other. You know, we respect each other fully. Yeah. You know. Yeah, man. Well, um, I grew up in L.A. in the 90s myself. I'm in my mid 40s. So I remember what it was like in the, the early to mid, you know, 90s. Um, yeah. Were you, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what age range are you in? Me, yeah, I'm 43. Oh, so we're literally the same age, 1978 yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. perfect. So we're in the same range. So um, what was, so uh, when was Minnesota, Minneapolis specifically, when were, was it just most active? Because in L.A. in 93, we had like 2,400 murders in one year. Don't yeah, so I think I think when we first got the, the name Murder Atlas, mm. we got that from the news. You see, a lot of people would try to take credit like we the ones, the, 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 the gang members or the thugs in the streets made that up, but it, it wasn't. It was the news, and that happened around probably the, the end of the 95 going into 96 is when we got the name Murder Rappers from the news people. You know, and that, and that year we had a lot of murders that year, you know. Mm. The, gang, the gang activity was real high at that time. 
And you know, where I'm from, at, at back in the day, it wasn't cool to be a crip mm-hmm. or a blood. You know, because mm-hmm. we're we're in the Midwest. This ain't this ain't you know this ain't a crip and blood region. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is more like for GDs and Chicago gangs. You know what I'm saying? So back then, we really had to stick up for each other. You know, we had to go to each other's schools. You know, it was just crazy because people was not respecting the Crips at first. Mm. But then it was a few of us that really put it down for the for that line and, 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 and made niggas start respecting the game. Same with the Bloods, you know. I got to get them. I got to get them. They, they probably, because they was here before us. They was, they was in Minneapolis before us, okay. you know. But, and they always have, they've always held their hood down. Their hood has always been bloodhood in the 30s. If you ever, if a motherfucker from Minnesota and they say something about 30s, they're going to say that's the blood hood. Like, they got family generations on that, mm-hmm. you know, and they held it down. So I always respect that gangster because they're not going to go for no bullshit through that way, you know? See the city bus. She don't want to ride the city bus. Because she's new to the town, I advise Look for truth, the ears are lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud, dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash, I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up, I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah most of my life i've been following stars knowing i ain't really had to go that far come to find out is the truth i already know yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blame instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to baby, that's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about baby, just sit your ass Damn. You wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather, maybe we cut a rug Drinking and driving on the low key, rum in a jug Give me a hug, wrong nigga baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning Won't remember shit, I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food. I was watching an old news story uh, from Minnesota from the 80s, you know, just in preparation of the interview. And, yeah. and they mentioned the Blue Disciples. This was. Yeah, this, so. This what, the GDs. Yes, I was going to say, was is it safe to say then that the GDs and the Crips had that eight ball alliance thing at the beginning? No, we, ne- we, never, we never knew nothing about none of that. Like. We separate like a lot of people was thinking that GDs and Crips was this like the same or none of that. But we we we're different. You, you know, we don't rock no stars. You know, you from LA, we ain't rocking no stars. No Crips mm-hmm. is not rocking no stars and nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But we still get along with them though. You know, we like shit. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, shit. To the best of your knowledge, when did Crips and Bloods first make an appearance in Minneapolis, in Minnesota? Yeah, I'd say around like. I say the Bloods was here like in the in the in the like the early eighties or the late eighties. Okay. And the Crips came around. I say I know from my my hood when my homie Big Shaq came down here. You know he came down here. So I say that was like in the early. I say like in the early eighties too, around that time. But he was on the low. He was getting a lot of money. You know. So he was yeah, he was getting a lot of money. So and so he started flipping people. Come here, here go half a chicken to, to flip this, or here go some money. You know, so motherfuckers was doing it because how many people has, has ever seen a half a bird or had a whole bird to themselves? 
So when a person comes and giving you that to make you get down, I mean, people was doing it. it. They was doing it. And then, but once they got on, it, it was really what it was. You know, we're not doing no faking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, from what I understand, Minneapolis was there kind of at the, you know, the early stages of, of the expan- expan- expansion, excuse me, from L.A. to across the yeah. across the country of the Crips and the Bloods. I know, you know, crack cocaine obviously had a lot to do with that, but in your opinion, yeah. uh, did movies like Colors and, you know what I'm saying, Gangster Rap, did did they have any, you know, big effect on, on gangs, you know, from the West Coast? Yeah, they had Colors had a big influence on us, you know. And if a person say that, it wasn't that line because when that movie came out and like you got to spend a week from a place where we don't even really, we wasn't really knowing nothing about it. So when we found out and seen the movie, like, okay. And that's what it is. And, you know, a lot of people took it from there and went with it. But what really, really got us really going was when people started coming up here from L.A. See, people was coming up here from L.A. way back in the days. But people wasn't, we wasn't really knowing it. They wasn't really saying, uh, like, I know a lot of uh, uh, Crips that was coming from L.A. that don't even say cuz, really. You would never even know. We got some older homies down there in Gardena that had come up here, and you won't even know that they Crips. They never say cuz, but they got so much money. So when they was coming up here getting money back in the day, because our state is known for getting a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? So when they came up here and started getting a lot of money, then that's when the, the flip, the, the, you know, people start flipping from, being Chicago gang to being Crips and people that wasn't in gangs start to be Crips and blood because we seen how the activeness was when we was watching the movie, you know, and, and, and that's what it was. We just, we really got on like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now let's say uh, you mentioned Gardena. Let's talk about shotgun specifically yeah. um, to the best of your knowledge before we jump into, you know, Minneapolis uh, shotgun. Tell everybody kind of a history, you know, of how Shotgun got started out here in Gardena, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know the, the beginning of the history because I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, if you're not from, that, from the land, you really ain't going to know the, the very, very beginning. I just know what the homies that came up here yeah, was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, sure, to the best of your knowledge. Like, yeah, like, the, like the, the homie Smiley, you know what I'm saying? The homie Mad Bill, Mad Bill was from the nine, you know what I'm saying? So they was coming up here teaching us the game. They was, t- they was telling us about paybacks and, you know, it was a lot of criticism that we was never even hearing about. Like, damn, okay, that's cool, that's cool. But what they was really pushing was to get that money. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we all, we all had always had money. It's just what it is. Like, we, we kind of, like, spoiled because our homies always been stayed in, in, in touch with the homies in the land. You know, a lot of people who claim Crip and Blood up here, they, they don't even be having no ties to their homies down there in the land. But we was just fortunate enough to have that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but now our whole city, the whole north side, you know, the whole north side, a lot of the uh, all the young cats on the north side of Minneapolis is repping shotgun and crib. Mm. You know, is it right now our shit is split up in cliques now, so niggas is is, is banging against each other inside hood banging because we, we we're click banging now. You know, we're all from the hood, but niggas start breaking off with certain sets like. Like I was, I was looking at a thing on on on, on the lad a TV, mm-hmm. and he was showing the Grape Street, and they had like it was like a gang of Grape Street, but it, they say they hood is so deep that they was broke off in sections. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, that's that's basically how we was doing down. That's how we're doing down here. We're just click banging now, mm-hmm. and, and it's getting crazy because we're killing each other. We're killing our own homies, and it it's just stupid to me. Let's uh let, let's take it back then. Um, I know you said you're you're you were seeing your pops, you know, do his thing when he was cripping. Was he yeah. shotgun also, or was he something else? No, I, my, my, my dad was a Raymond. Okay. Yeah. He was a Raymond crip. Gotcha. And gotcha. He, he, had been down there, he had went down there and, and bumped into some of the Raymonds down there. Then came back up here with, with, with the homie big O big O from the land down there. He came up here with the homie big O and they, they put the Raymonds on down here, down on 14th in Chicago. That's on the South side. You know what I'm saying? Right by, Right, kind of by our hospital, but when they they put them on and and so so I was seeing a lot of that. I, I grew up in Raymond Hood, you know, so I, I was seeing a lot of that. And then because a lot of people thought I was going to be a Raymond, but I just happened to got down with the homies from the gun, and and, and, and I went from there. Just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat. Just well, shit, let's take it back a little bit before you joined Shotgun. Were you yeah. were you running the street? You know, doing your thing. 
not too much. I was I was out in the street, but it wasn't like no no doing no crazy shit. Our whole thing was out there was throwing rocks at cars and running because we was young. You know what I'm saying? We was young dudes. The, 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 I'll say the, the the real the real like the the real banging for me started like when I got about like thirteen. 13, or, and we was just fist fighting around that time. I was getting shot here and there, but I say around that time is when I was, when I was like 12 or 13 is when people was really starting to step their game up because now everybody want to be a gangster now, you know? Everybody trying to push that line. Everybody was trying to get that that rep. And then all of a sudden, our Mall of America got built. So now people was taking the fighting from downtown and the shooting downtown to shoot, going out to the Mall of America. Mm. <laughs> It was crazy. Then they started putting jails in the mall, and then so both started still going out to the roller. It, it, it got real. It got real crazy down here. Mm. You know, it got mm. real crazy. Damn. And, yeah. and how old were you when you became Crip? I was like, I'll say I was like probably twelve. Mm-hmm. I'll say I was about twelve, thirteen. You know, that's a common age. I hear. 10, 11, yeah, ten, eleven. I wasn't even thinking about that shit. I ain't gonna lie. I was, ten, eleven, and, and younger than that, I was thinking about all I was thinking about was uh. Going outside, throwing rocks at cars, getting chased, and 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 lighting fires on the alley. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's all I was thinking about. But when I got like thirteen, I say like thirteen, fourteen, around that age, then I started. That's when I started really understanding gang lifestyle. Like, cause I'm seeing my dad, I'm seeing his homies coming over. I'm like, damn. You know, they they was having so much love for each other. I'm like, damn. Okay, I see what's going on. So a lot of his homies they st- uh, putting me the genuine love about being or being a real friend, a real homie. Mm. And that's why I picked up my, a lot of my qualities and traits from, from them. And I, I give it up to the Raymonds because they're the ones that really first showed me Crippin. They didn't want to show me Crippin just by watching my dad and his homie. Mm. Okay. Well, shit, take me back to the day you got put on the hood. You know, what, what, mm-hmm. what was your vibe like? What's the experience? You know, how did uh, the, day I got, go? the day I got put on the hood, right? I was, I had I had came from because I was living in the forties and, and and I had took the I had took the uh, bus down to the I was I went down to Raymond Hood then from Raymond Hood I went over to over north so when I got over north you know me and my me and my cousin me and my cousin we in the we in the crib and we we both joking we both joking but we don't know that is a, a person that's really with the shit in there like his brother's a real somebody. So we in there joking and joking like, man, we'll get put on right now. Woo, woo, we talking shit. The whole time, the older homie in the back making calls. So he's making calls like a motherfucker, man. So the next thing you know, we look up. is pulling up. And, and this time, switches. It was, a, it was a lot of, we was having hydraulics. We was having a lot of hydraulics up here. So when we see that, we like, okay. They just pulled up, came in the crib, and was like, y'all ready to get put on? We like, what? They was like, yeah, we heard what y'all been talking about. So we go out in the back. I let my cousin get put on first. I'm seeing how they put him on. They throw him all on the grill. I'm like, damn. So when they look at me like, man, you ready to get put on? I'm like, look, I'd rather go shoot. I'd rather go dump on somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather go put that work in because that's what I that's what I like to do and shit at that time. They was like, nah, nah. And then they say, you know, it was just on from there. You know, and then from that day on, though, I, I, I got a lot of love. But you had to be really a somebody, though. It, it was no faking back then. There was no faking back then. And just like now, it really ain't no faking because if you're faking right now, you can get killed. And this young guy has got the streets right now. I don't care what nobody say. The young dudes got the streets right now, and they don't got no problem with shooting them off our old niggas. Ugh. They got no problem. I've heard a uh, few OGs, you know, older former gang members, yeah. you know, say or gang bangers, I should say, because you're always a member, but. Yeah. They uh, they said uh, you know back in the day there was there was kind of a a code you know what I'm saying if you saw yeah. your your enemy at the mall and he's with this girl and his yeah. baby and he's walking towards you 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 look at him like you know I could have got you right but you you yeah. let him go you know nowadays they're shooting the baby shooting the girl the dude who works at Foot Locker yeah. and my whole take on that is this <laughs> and some people might get mad at me and everything but if you my enemy like I've never understood that. I don't wish jail on my enemy, but I'd rather ki- I kill him. If you're my enemy, you're my sworn enemy. I don't give a fuck, no shape, form, or fashion about you, your family, your kids, or nothing because you're trying to kill me in these streets. So I don't give a fuck, nothing about what ha- what you do or what happened to you, your mama, your kids. I don't give a fuck. If, if, if you're really my enemy, like how I'm saying you're my enemy, like if you went and shot me and 
put me on paralyze me. You my enemy. I don't give a fuck nothing about you. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how I look at that. But I'm not going to go out there and shoot my kids though, because I'm a big I'm, I'm a big supporter on kids. I love kids. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to shoot my kids. I'm really not going to shoot nobody, baby mama, unless she's active. If she's active in this shit, then she all she deserves to get shot. I still like it. But I, I right now I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a stage right now. I'm trying to transition it over to a civilian, man. Mm-hmm. This shit ain't all the, what people think it is, man. This shit is like the loyalty ain't like it used to be back then. I say back then there was more loyalty to this shit. Mm. Now there ain't really no loyalty to this. There's no loyalty to this game because now older homies are sending the young guys off to do stupid shit, you know, and they go into jail for the rest of their life. The next thing you know, they telling on somebody. It just get, it just get, it just get crazy out here. I'm at a crossroads every damn day, looking back in my past when I sleep. But living on the edge, not doing enough. Iniquity down to my feet. What do I do when I need a little food and I gotta get the money for the rent? Fall to my knees, pray to the Lord, come on, son, here you give me some money, repent. What? What? Thank you. I really love you, baby, so I spank you. Life is a west straight, fucking you up. Living in a prison, I'ma shank you. So what's love got to do when you're winning with my heart? I'ma sleeve, I'ma fold. But she said she loved me, she wanted to hug me, and she starts get told. And I spy with my little mind's eye, dreams that are beyond what you can see in daylight, baby. Gonna be okay. And while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline and I'll be biding my time till I can ride the wave. Then everything gonna be okay. Yeah. What are the chances? You're picking a flight, we're leaving tonight. Pack up your bags, we're leaving this place and this baggage. Cause what can we do? While Rome is collapsing But not in a day We'll be okay Let's hit the Amalfia Jackson I'll pull up the map then Cause I'm through Keeping up with these Joneses Don't care what they're posting You know You only see what they show you Let's fall off the grid then Cause we don't Owe nothing to no one Darling just listen It'll be Just like starting over and I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on What you can see in daylight Baby ignore the rain Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give you, me You've done prison time, right? Just due, due to the yeah, conversation just, we had offline Yeah, I just, I, just did, I just got done doing 10 years I got locked up in 08 I, I, I had got caught with my second pistol case So I was in the county fighting that Then I got into a fight with somebody in there and fucked him up real bad, and they put the shit all on the news, and in the newspaper on some bullshit, and they gave me 161 months for that shit. I got out in 17, and I'm still, right now, as I'm talking right now, I'm on ISR. Mm-hmm. And it ain't nothing but a year program, and I got out in 17, but I keep nothing going back and back and back for violations, six months here, a, a year here, and shit like that, you know? Right now, this is the closest I've ever been to coming off ISR right now. And I say I got like I got like probably uh I get off I, I mean I don't get off but I get into phase three on the 18th of this month that's just nothing but curfew now I ain't got a call dude to go here and there you know so I'm almost done with this shit and that's why I be telling people like this shit ain't what's up man because a lot of people left me down and out when I did them ten mm. Mm. I say the people that showed me love is when I when I got when I got to Kansas. When I went to Kansas, man, the, the Kansas, the, the Kansas, the Kansas Crips and Blood showed me so much love. I shot out Kansas City on the Kansas City, Kansas side. They showed me so much love out there, man, and really, you know, what I'm saying, really got me through that shit. You know, so I shot them out all the time. The Hoovers, the neighborhood, the neighborhood Crips from Wichita, the Hoovers from Kansas. You know, I, I got a lot of love for them, man. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, shit, let's, let's talk a little bit about prison, man. Um, so we, let's rewind, you know, 10 years ago, 2008. Mm-hmm. What's it like for an active gang member to enter prison? 
Well, when you get in there, when you get in there, you know, you're going to get some people that's going to, like for me, when I got in there, my first time in there, you know, I was, I was young. So they sent me to a, a medium camp and it was like college. I'm like, this shit is nothing. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, I had, I had 12 months to do, did that, got out. You know, you do, you do eight months off of each year. So when I did that, I got back out. It was, you know, I'm like, that ain't shit. Caught another case, went back to another medium. Shit didn't get hard until Mupper got to our, to the max joints. And it, and then still, it wasn't like that hard until I got out of town. Cause we was banging in the joints. We was banging in the joints down here. So they, they, they took 20 of us and, and split us all up. Mm. I ended up getting shot down to Kansas. When I got down there, I seen a whole nother way of, of prison, of a prison lifestyle. You know, I seen a whole nother way. Like we're not even really bidding in jail up here. Our jails, like it's real simple. You get, I'm talking about you get paid real good. The jails is clean. You know, you get good food as far as, far as jail shit. Man, you get down to Kansas, man, that shit is hard times, man. You got to really know how to hustle down there in them joints. I was in Hutch, and I was in Lansing, and I was in uh, El Dorado right next to the B2K killer. You know, that was my next door neighbor. And, and it, 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 down there, they're not faking, man. That, that crippling blood shit is for real. And I'm going to tell you, the, the Serenials and the Northanials, mm-hmm. boy, they go the hardest to me mm-hmm. because they're not letting nobody – they're not letting nobody from the uh, like if it's a North Angeles, he's not letting no he's not letting no surrender touch their compound and vice versa. So I'll be like, yeah, they they not faking. We'll we'll sit here and let a blood or a crib walk past us, and we won't even think nothing about it. They ain't playing. Mm. I'm like, and they work out like a well oiled machine. They some I, I seen that shit. I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. Like down here in, in L. A., they say they be funking with the Mexicans and shit. I don't, like up here. I didn't really never. Like, we don't really be around the Mexicans like that, you know? Mm. We got a lot of Somalians up here. Mm. We, got a, we got a whole bunch of Somalians, and they come from, like, California. The Somalians I know, they come from San Diego, and they all Crips. Mm. We, they do everything we do. I'm telling you. Damn. But, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Who, and this is the best way to phrase to put it, but who, quote, runs the prisons over in that area? Who run the prisons? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I say, really, nobody runs our prisons. Like it, each person got a, they got the keys to the car. You got one person that might have the keys to the car. You know what I'm saying? And he's gonna like call shots or probably because down there they, they, you're make, they're making it work out. You got to work out and you got to stay on point and you just got to be you just got to be on your p's and q's because the shit is so dangerous down there. You can lose your life and shit. So we're not, we got to, when we're working out, we got to make sure we're looking up, looking to see where our homies is. Like after every set, we're looking up to count where our homies at on the yard because all the phones is out on the yard. So, and at any time somebody can go out there and get hurt, you know, so it, it, it's real out there, man. It's real. I hear it ain't really, the jails here ain't really that hard. If you ask me, you know, so when I came back and told these, and told, and, and told the homies about down there and about how, the jail is down there. They, they they didn't believe me. I'm like, man, look, we got it easy up here. I ain't gonna lie, we got it real easy in Minnesota in the prison. Our streets is dangerous, but the prisons is easy. Mm. <laughs> I ain't, uh, ain't nobody dying really. Ain't nobody getting stabbed. Ain't nobody getting hit in the head with lock. Mm. Ain't nothing. There's just a lot of going to cell and fight. You get down there in them other joints down there in Kansas or anywhere else, man, more getting fucked off. Like you can't even. Like I couldn't even take a shower. Without, uh, 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 I had to take showers with my boots on in Kansas. You know, Damn. I had to get in there with a two minute shower, one minute shower, and get the fuck up out of there because it's so dangerous. You can get killed back there. Ain't no cameras, ain't no guards back there. It's it, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It was fucked up. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. So when you walk mm-hmm. in, you know, when you walk in the first day, are you looking mm-hmm. for you know fellow Crips or you know you, you, what's what's your mentality when when you're walking in? How I did it, I shit. When I how I did it is, I woke up one day and it was a motherfucker getting a violation, I guess, in the back. So when I heard the squeaking, that's what made me hurry up and jump up. Like what the? Fuck? And then I heard, I heard my homie Mac Maul start saying, "Cause this and cause that." I, so I'm like, "Boy, you a crip?" He like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Well, homie, I'm such and such from shotgun. This is this, this, that, and the other. Here go my paperwork to show you I ain't hot." From there, he introduced me to a lot of the other homies from the from Hoover. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was down in Kansas, I had to go plug with the Hoovers because 
you know, down there, the gun and the hoop, and the gun and the groove is together. I, I, and it ain't that many people, it ain't that many shotguns down there. So I had to go plug with the groove. But you know, I I, I introduce myself to me anywhere I go. I'm going to when I get a person to a joint. I'm asking where the Crips is because that's what I am. I'm not going to be playing. I'm not going to be faking because this is my life. So I, where's the Crips at? And then I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna introduce myself, tell them where I'm from, show them the paperwork, show them I ain't hot, and we're gonna go from there. You know, if I gotta put some work in, come on, let me go because I know I'm gonna have to put some work in down here. You know what I'm saying? Because people want to know if you really with the shit. So. Who, who who I need to go get down with, go get at real quick? Let me go and get this all out the way, and we go from there. You know, we go from there. You know, I love this cribbing shit, but I don't. Mm. It's like a double edged sword to this shit. Mm. A double edged sword to it, man. And a lot of these young guys don't understand or know that they'll get out there, they'll join the gang, and, and then all of a sudden when the shit gets to hitting the fan, they looking crazy. Should have read that small print at the bottom. <laughs> this shit is serious. You know, damn. That's serious. Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat um, yeah, I want to get uh, kind of go back to prison. Uh, so when you so when you get to prison, is it um, is it on with other bloods or are you guys sticking together for numbers reasons? No, what it is is a lot of us crypt and bloods we really be having to like, well, I don't know how the blood is, uh, but the Crips, we really be having to stick together because we're in an area where, like I said, it's nothing but Chicago gangs here. You see? So, yeah, it, it ain't nothing but Chicago gangs here. So, just imagine back when we was first starting off, the, the Chicago gangs is trying to push us out the way. Like, well, they never even heard of blood and Crips and shit like that. So, when we start pushing that line and stuff, they really want to move us out the way, but we just held, we held strong. So when we get to the joint, a lot of the Crips be having to really come together. Like we down here, we do our own thing. We're not doing no, uh, Oh, I'm a gangster Crip and you, and you from neighborhood. So we, we automatically into it. We don't do that down here because a lot of us and grew up together. Niggas and started living in certain sides of the neighborhood. So they picked that side of the Crips to fuck with. Well, so we go hard with each other. You know what I'm saying? We're going to, we're going to rock with each other. We got to. We we're in the area. We are in the Midwest. This ain't our region, really. <laughs> you know, this is a, this is more of a Chicago gang, a GD Vice Lord, and all that region. You know, you know. Yeah. Is it uh is it hard for or is it easy for someone to? Let me rephrase this a little bit. Um, have you ever known anyone to say, "Yeah, I'm such and such from you know this crib set," and then it turns out that they're not who they say they are? Yeah, we. Like, we didn't have people do this. We'll go put somebody on the hood, and then we won't see them no more. Like, where the fuck? We just put it. And then, so from that, we started, a lot of people just couldn't get put on our hood. Like, you had to wait damn near a year, if not more, before you could even get put on the hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we was tired of motherfuckers get a motherfucker get put on runoff. We don't never see this motherfucker again. Where'd he go? You know, so... And it was it, it was hard getting put on. I know when I was coming up, it was hard getting put on. You know, our homies was like, "Us up, us up." They'll come pick us up. We think we rolling with the older homies, thinking we cool and all that. Man, the whole time the homies come to fuck up. they fuck us up just to see where everybody at with theirs. Mm. You know, so it was crazy. It was hella crazy. But I love it because it taught me to. I wouldn't say it taught me to be a man because I I, I feel like I grew into being a man. But what it did teach me though was how to just, how to have love for my homies, real love, not no playing, not no faking. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 that's why I don't, that's why I go hard on motherfuckers that be faking about this shit. Because I'm looking at them like, bro, you don't even know how much shit I didn't sacrifice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't just went and did a gang of time, oh, a ten or not a ten or more years out my daughter's life for this cripping shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I, I hate them all faking, playing with this. I hate it. We uh we kind of talked about gangster rap earlier, and mm -hmm. I would love your opinion on this since you did a lot of time, and you know it sounds like you really took you know Crip into to the fullest. What are your thoughts on you know a lot of rappers uh, mm -hmm. who join gangs after they become famous? You know I can name 
I can name some names, yeah, the Lil Wayne's, yeah. the Chris Browns, the, yeah. you know, Takashi six nines and, and things like that. What, what are your thoughts on those type of people? I mean, shit. I don't, I know me. If I get rich, I ain't thinking about this shit. I'm gone. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to call my daughter, grandson, boy, y'all better come on. If y'all don't, I'm gone. <laughs> but, but for the guys, that, for the rappers, I mean, what I do is I tip my hat to the, to the real game members that's out there that's holding it down because they ain't doing nothing but being smart. They're playing this game like a monopoly, like a chessboard. You know, Chris Brown, you want to be down with us? Okay, look, this is what's going to have to happen, though. You're going to have to put that money into our hood. There you go. You ain't gonna do, we ain't going to let you do no shoot, no gangbanging, or nothing. We got that for you. Because I, I truly believe in the hood, everybody got a position to play. You got hustlers, that's hustlers. You got killers, that's killers. And you just got motherfuckers that just like to party. We got the fashion lopes that just look good. They're not doing nothing. But they're just part of the hood, you know. Everybody got a position to play in this thing. You can't take a, 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 a dealer or a hustler and try to turn him into a killer because that's not what he is. You know what I'm saying? That's, and I believe if a person steadily stay in their lane, it, the snitching will stop. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's what, that, that, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Like, it, Chris, I, 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 like, I think Chris Brown from Fruit Town, ain't he? That's what, yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, Fruit Town. Yeah, like, I, I think a little thing with him and uh, the, the uh, Soulja Soulja Boy. Boy type of, yeah, so I'm like, okay, but they really had love for uh, 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 Chris Brown, though. Mm-hmm. So well, either he put enough money behind their hood, or he's really out there putting in work, which I don't think he's out there putting in work, because I would truly believe if Chris Brown go and shoot at somebody, I don't give a fuck how tough they is. They're telling them Chris Brown. Oh, shit, that's Chris Brown. Because, then you know, just because he's a celebrity, they, everybody going to want to be on TMZ telling them Chris Brown. Mm. You know, that's, that's, how, that's where I'm at with that. that that's why I like. But I, I, like I say, I support them niggas, man. Put that, put them rap, rappers on. You know, put the rappers on. You know, Sebo was coming down here fucking with us for a long time. You know, okay. so from Northern California, Richard Factor fuck with us down here. You know, it's a lot of niggas fuck with us down here. You know, so I put them on. Mm. I love to put them on. What you for? You a famous singer, man? We're gonna put you on the hood tonight mm. because I, I, I believe you can't. Hang uh, what I used to say. I used to say, uh, what I said, you, you either gonna get on or get the fuck on. That that was my whole motto to it. If you're gonna hang with us, you're gonna get put on. We're not having nobody around us that ain't put on, period. So that's why I used to say, man, either you're you gonna get on or get the fuck on away from us. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little Are you familiar with the, the Takashi 6 9 character? Yep, yep, I, I've seen a little bit of that. Okay. And he, he's proud to be a rat, though. That You know, he's proud to be a rat. I, I, don't, I don't condone snitching, but he's standing on it. So a moment. I gotta give him his props. He's standing on it. Mm. But I didn't see the man say, yeah, I told, but Meek Mill's a snitch. He is snitch. And he got to point out all kinds of moments. We wouldn't believe that shit, believe the snitches. And he's saying he's seen paperwork. Mm. He's standing on it. So my whole thing is this. Whatever you do, I don't give a fuck if you're a, a rat, a snitch, because I believe a snitch and a rat is, is two different things, you know. But if you're a rat or a snitch or a killer or a drug, stand on it. That's all you got to do. Stand on that shit. Stand on it. You know, stand on it. If you told on somebody, stand on it. Be like, hell yeah, I told on dude. Blase Skippy, you know? Mm-hmm. Don't sit there and say you, you you told on him and then be trying to deny it and trying to get everybody else indicted. And No, nah, don't do that. Stand on that shit. Yeah, I told. And I believe if you tell on somebody, if you put a black eye in it, get out the game. It's over with. Because this is what happened. You'll get a lot of motherfuckers that they'll, they'll go tell and then get right back in the game. That, that don't even make sense. You told to get yourself out of trouble, but you go right back out there and do the same shit. You get right back in trouble again to tell on somebody else. You might as well just go be a police officer. Mm. You might as well go sign out for that shit. You know. Mm. So I believe whatever you do, stand on what you believe. Or stand on what you believe in. Mm-hmm. If you believe in telling on the motherfucker, stand on it. Yeah. Stand on that shit. Fair enough, man. Well, shit, the last question I have for you, and we'll mm-hmm. kind of wrap it up with this question. You mentioned you got put on, you know, or you, you started really doing your thing around 11, 12. If you could talk to, hypothetically, if you could talk to an 11-year-old you right now, 
as the person mm-hmm. you are at 43, all the shit you saw, the people you've lost, everything, mm-hmm. what would you tell an 11 year old you? Get the fuck away from that shit. Though. Get away right now. Go, go, go to the park, go to the park, get away from, get away from this because it's not what it used to be. Like this is not cracked up what it used to be. It's not, you it used to be fun. We used to have fun, fun, fun until guess what? Most people start dying close to our circle. Mm-hmm. Oh shit. So when a when a mother that you grew up or, or you you went to the junior high with or a grade school with died by a gunshot wound by another gang, it, it, it shocks you. It, it shocks the shit out of you and then it, 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 it takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you. So I would tell me, man, get your ass away from this, man. Mm-hmm. Get your ass away from it because in the end, it's not going to be as pretty as you think it is. It's not going to be as pretty as you think it shit is, you know? Mm-hmm. Even though I love it, I, I love it because this is this is my, I, I ain't going to say this is my life because I truly believe I could change my life at any time. But this is what I believe in. You know, my my core values, I mean, my core beliefs, my values, it believes in the ideology of what Crippen was about. You know what I'm saying? So until that changed, then this is what it is, you know? This is what it is, and I love it. I ain't gonna lie, I, I like it, and, and I can be getting a lot of people that be like, "Man, you crazy? You too old for this, that?" And I'll be like, "All right, but I'm just gonna keep it real with you." If, if I if I if I was a fake motherfucker, I'd be like, "Nah, I ain't trying to do this. I ain't no crip." No, I like this shit. I ain't gonna lie to a motherfucker. You're standing on it, just like you said. Yeah, I got to because I've been putting it. I've been putting it down for this so long, for so long, and 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 I and I believe in it. I believe in this shit. Yeah. What does Crip mean to you? Crippin is my, I say it before Crippin was my lifestyle, my life, everything, everything that I believe in got, had something to do with Crippin. Crippin was, I say Crippin was my daddy, the streets was my mama, and it, it raised me to be the person I am today. And it gave me, it gave me some morals and, and, and everything. See, a lot of people think because we're gang members that we're not learning or we just so disrespectful, but it didn't. It showed me respect. It showed me how to have brother brotherhood for my my fellow brothers, you know how to pro, how to protect my brothers and all that, you know. So I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yo, well, no good. It's it's been a pleasure, homeboy. I really uh, enjoyed yeah. your the time, and I appreciate you sharing your story. And um, yeah. maybe we can, you know, do do part two in a, in, in a few months. Yeah, or something I would like love that. it. I would love to keep doing this every yeah. week. Yeah. I do this every once a week, Man. and I'd like to get a young cat on here so I could talk to him because I truly believe trying to. I won't try to change a person from being a crip, but I would try to give them the, 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 the outlook on it. Like, look, man, this is what it's going to be about. If you still want to get down, all right. But just look at that fine print because at that fine print at the end of the day, that's what's going to define you at the end because this shit is for real, for real. I'm going to stay close in touch with you, man, because I'm going to see to it personally in any way that I can even if it's like I said throwing you on the show every once in a while I'm gonna right. see that you get to your next phase in your in your um, ISR process and yeah. eventually become a free you know a free 100% free man but I want to drop something on you dog just from talking right. tonight and, and just hearing your 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 enthusiasm for your life and I bet you have a lot of stories I think you should start a YouTube channel I think you should start a YouTube channel and just turn the camera on and just talk, dog. Just talk. Maybe one one night, pick a story about the day you got put on and just talk about that for like 20 minutes. I I can just download that to YouTube? Yep. It's really easy, homie. Get one of your younger younger homies or even, even go on YouTube and type in, how do I start a YouTube channel? And it's really okay. simple, dog. I know you were locked up for a minute, so the technology is probably all still yeah, new to you. I got out. I, my daughter had to teach me everything. She had to teach me. To get your daughter. Get your daughter to teach you. It's it's as easy as start. If you if you know how to start a Facebook page, just to know you do because we're friends on Facebook. It's yeah. just that easy to start a YouTube channel, and you just mm-hmm. record from your phone, and you could literally just download it to to face to uh, YouTube. And I believe yeah. people will come to you, man. And I think in a year, you know, you could really, you know, if you keep consistent at it, that, that yeah, you could really platform. change some lives and have your own platform and, and, you know, maybe make a few bucks here and there. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to stay in contact with you because I definitely want to learn how to do that. Cool. And then, like, a, I'm a phone call away, a text away. If you if you have any questions, I've, I've been doing this for a minute, and I've made every mistake twice, so I know what to do, what not to do when it comes to the YouTube game. So if you're really serious about it, which I I, I just had that feeling when I was talking to you. I was like, I should drop that on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just think about that, and if you have any questions, hit me up, dog. All right. I got you. Cool. We'll stay in touch. You got like to it. Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat I had to rush out of my bed Cause I was late for work My motherfucking rent is due And my boss is a jerk Pencil pushing at the job An intermediate clerk My mama told me to go to school I'm going bananas berserk I work every day Don't know where the money goes My girl is big and pregnant Want me to paint her toes Only a high school diploma I'm smelling the aroma The greenery is burning in my room but life is a mama sita. She glad to meet ya. She bad coming soon.